Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for inviting me to today's conference uh, devoted to the vaccine rollout. Obviously, in this country, it's all going very well. And um, let's hope it continues this way. Um, but um, I'd like to talk to you about uh, the vaccine hesitancy. Uh, I'll give you a historical overview. Uh, and I'll also tell you how we can talk to people who are hesitant in order to possibly change their mind. Um, a recent YouGov poll um, showed that 21% uh, of adults in the UK um, are unlikely to take the vaccine, while a further 12% um, are, are unsure. Uh, which means that 33%, uh, which is a third of all the UK adults, are still um, hesitant, uh, are not confident they will take the vaccine. Um, Paula Larson, who's a medical historian at Oxford University, who also studies the anti-vaccination movements, um, says that vaccine hesitancy is as old as the vaccines themselves. Um, the first ever vaccine against a contagious disease was developed by a British doctor called Edward Jenner in 1796. And as you can imagine, back then, the risks of taking a vaccine uh, were a lot higher than they are now. Um, obviously, the vaccines were carried out in not very sanitary um, conditions, which led to uh, secondary uh, infections. Um, however, they still outweighed the, the side effects and the risks posed by the disease themselves. Uh, these um, side effects of the vaccine were sometimes uh, lingering and unpleasant. Some people had to take time off work uh, and obviously that meant the loss of income. So back then, these um, concerns and the hesitancy was legitimate uh, and justified. Um, what also surfaced during the pandemics back in the day uh, were what Paula Larson calls the white knights. They were people who harnessed uh, these um, popular concerns and used them to drive their own agenda, but also uh, to paint themselves as heroes. And uh, she gives, uh, Paula Larson, that is, gives a specific example of um, a person like this. Uh, he was called Dr. Alexander Ross, who during the smallpox outbreak in uh, Montreal in uh, 1885, produced a pamphlet where he assured his readers that the vaccine did not prevent the smallpox at all, that indeed it caused it, along with some other diseases like syphilis, for example, that it killed children. And funnily enough, that the uh, pandemic or the, sorry, the epidemic in the city uh, didn't really exist. And it was a figment of um, someone's imagination. As proof, he produced these testimonials from people who branded themselves as doctors, professors, sirs. And these tactics... Um, are present throughout history uh, and these tactics include talking down the disease threat but at the same time talking up the vaccine threat, um, hinting at a bigger conspiracy and appealing to other authority figures who dare to challenge the, the overall consensus. Uh, and now Talking of maybe actions uh, speaking louder than words, um, surprise, surprise, Dr. Ross got vaccinated himself during the, um, the epidemic. So how do we approach the vaccine hesitant? How do we talk to these people to make them change their mind and, um, and get vaccinated? First and foremost, we shouldn't brand them as um, anti-vaxxers. This is a pejorative term 
doesn't sit with people well. And there is a clear distinction between the anti-vaxxers and uh, the vaccine hesitant people. Um, anti-vaxxers are very hard to convince, sometimes maybe even impossible to convince, while the vaccine hesitant people um, just have concerns and they, they want to be listened to uh, and they want their concerns to be um, somehow uh, debunked uh, and explained. Secondly, we need to approach these people the right way. Obviously, instinctively, we want to tell them they're wrong uh, and we want to confront them. And maybe sometimes we even want to dismiss them as crazy or stupid, but this is not the right way. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, basic uh, human instinct um, is wired in such way that if our beliefs get challenged, we end up believing them even more firmly than before. This is the so-called backfire effect. Um, us human beings, we've got this defensive mechanism where we actively seek out information that proves uh, that we are right. Thirdly, when we talk to vaccine-hesitant people, uh, we need to be empathetic. We can't be judgmental. We need to actively listen uh, and focus on the benefits of getting vaccinated. Uh, rather than contradicting these people, we should show them where they can get additional information. When people feel trusted and, most of all, respected, uh, then they are more likely uh, to listen to us. And also, if they find the information on their own, uh, they have time to process it and to uh, engage without feeling defensive. Fourth, there is uh, some behavioural uh, behavioral science tactics which can be used by, by everyone, by governments, by even by us talking to our uh, friends or family members who are vaccine hesitant. And the best thing that the governments all over the world could do is to make um, taking the vaccine seem like the social norm use very positive language which inherently assumes that taking the vaccine is the social norm, that everyone is doing it. Media should be uh, publishing headlines uh, which are uh, underlining and emphasising how high the vaccine take-up is uh, and how positive it is for the whole of society for, for us all to get vaccinated. We instinctively feel connected uh, with uh, those who are following rules. And we also do tend to copy our close ones um, or those who are in our in-group. So if they take the vaccine, we, we are uh, likely to, to follow them. And finally, it should be made very, very easy uh, to get vaccinated, to get vaccinated after work or um, at the weekend so that we don't have to take time off uh, work. It should be very easy to travel to the vaccination centres. Um, people should be given very clear instructions uh, of how to get to them uh, because we shouldn't underestimate uh, the, the power of, of these uh, informations and these clear instructions. They're very, very important. To sum up, hesitancy is as old as the vaccines themselves. To convince people, we shouldn't dismiss them as anti-vaxxers or as crazy or stupid. We should show them understanding, we should respect their views, we should actively listen and most of all focus on the benefits of getting vaccinated. Because using these smart behavioural uh, science tactics rather than a draconian system of enforcement um, is much more uh, positive and uh, much more effective because uh, these draconian measures only embed deeper the resistance, uh, the vaccine resistance. Um, and obviously 
now uh, we need people to cooperate for for the good for the for the future for the sake of the future of us all thank you very much